ensuring educational excellence, we challenge and inspire all learners to positively impact their world. for joining us tonight. This is the Birmingham Public Schools Board of Education, and today is July 23rd, 2019. We are holding an abbreviated meeting schedule for the month of July. However, then back in, when we get back to August, we will be back to our regular study sessions and meetings. Welcome, good evening. My name is Kim Whitman. We welcome each of you here tonight, and for those of you watching at home, please note that the meeting is being uh, televised, so it will be provided on on-demand video streaming through YouTube. Our first order of business is roll call, so Fran, can you please help us with that? Present. Here. 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 Thank you, Fran. So for those of you that are joining us, the month of July dictates that we have an organizational meeting and that in by, based on our own bylaws and policies, we have to hold our organizational meeting in July, as well as the first order of business is to have a voting of the election of officers. So that will be our first order of business. Trustees, do I have a motion? So moved. No. No, no. I move. No. Is there a motion, right? Mm -hmm. Is, mm -hmm. yeah. No, let her go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I move that Kim Whitman serve as president of the Board of Education for the terms July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. I move that Lori Angeluni serve as vice president of the Board of Education for the same term, that Adrian Young serve as secretary for the same term, and that Amy Hokemer serve as treasurer of the board for the same term. Is there a second to that second. motion? Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Trustees, any discussion or comments? Yes, you know what, I'd like to say, when I came on the board um, two and a half years ago, it was so much to absorb it, that it was rather overwhelming. And so I think creating the consistency of having some of the same officers in place, just for continuity and consistency, kind of helps the new trustees get their feet more solidly on the ground, and I, I think that it's very helpful. I found it helpful, and I think that the entire board will too. I agree. Any other comments, discussion? So all those in favor of the motion that Jen said, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> so Fran, allow resolution one to show <coughs> approval of six to zero. So thank you to all of you for that. So for our meeting tonight, we'll continue on. We'll start with our superintendent's report, followed by board comment, and then public comment. We will then move on to the formal report section of the agenda, where we'll have one presentation this evening. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, oh, sorry. Sorry, yep, I'm not, I'm, all right, thank you. Um, after the reports, we're gonna transition to the resolutions portion of the evening. And as I'd mentioned, this is our organizational administrative meeting, so you'll forget we have a lot of housekeeping to do at this meeting. We're gonna have a total of 14 resolutions. However, because we've already took care of one, we'll have a baker's dozen that'll be left. Um, and again, you'll see it's a collection of organizational start of the year type approvals. Many of those are tied to the designation and approval of check signers, ACH arrangements, our professional organizations that we will t uh, be part of, legal counsel, and lastly, a posting of our BOE meetings for the 2019-2020 school year. <coughs> we like to get those dates out to the community as soon as possible. However, before we move to the superintendent's report, our first order of business is approval of minutes. Trustees, you have seen in your board book, there were three sets of minutes mm -hmm. for approval this evening. June 17th, which was our special closed session in which we held our superintendent's evaluation meeting, and then June 18th and the 25th of June, which were our two regular meetings. Trustees, anything to edit, add, change? No. No. So with that, Fran, please show that the three sets of minutes are approved once they're signed. So with that, the next order of agenda is superintendent's <clears throat> report. I'll turn it over to Mark. Uh, thank you, President Whitman, um, members of the Board of Education. Uh, I just want to recognize and thank uh, Katie Schoen, a sixth grader from Berkshire Middle School, for reading our, our mission statement. 
Uh, and, uh, and thanks always to Alan for uh, getting those video clips together for us, even in the summer. We're able to do that and showcase our students talking about why it is that we're here. And that's positively impacting our future uh, with the education of our students. So thank you very much, Katie. Uh, I really only have two, two things that um, I'd like to mention to the Board of Education. Uh, um, first, after uh, uh, a nice relaxing beginning to July where I was able to take some, take some time off and spend it with my family, uh, we're back at it now, really, in conducting all of the organization that's required for the next school year. So uh, we passed the budget, and we thank you for your approval of that budget. And now we're starting to dive into <coughs> our meeting schedule for, uh, for the next year, a cadence to all of that work, um, planning our welcome back uh, for all of our, our staff members, uh, and really just hammer out the schedule for the next school year. And then I did want to mention to the Board of Education last week, uh, the, the full complement of our central leadership team uh, was able to spend two days together in a, uh, a really focused leadership retreat facilitated by Larry Lobert and Associates. And um, we were able to spend some really high quality time together. And all, our whole purpose was to talk about ways that we can become more effective administrators, respond, uh, re, uh, respond in a more effective manner to the concerns of our community, and make sure that we were doing everything possible as a team uh, to, to become um, highly effective educators for Birmingham Public Schools. And it was a great session. Uh, we spent a lot, of, a lot of quality time together with some great learning. Uh, we read Patrick uh, Lencioni's uh, Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Uh, and then we were able to talk about some of our strengths and weaknesses as leaders uh, and ways in which we can perform uh, more strongly as a team. It was a great two days together, and I just wanted to let you know that's something that's important to, to me. It's important to the entirety of the central leadership team, and we're real excited to act on some of the commitments we've made to one another moving forward. Very right. good. Thank you. Next on the agenda, board comments, requests, trustees. Well, you know, I just, I was talking with some friends of mine, and they told me that this year, this summer, that Detroit, the Cobo Hall Center, was um, hosting the 102nd um, NAACP conference, and it was down at Cobo Hall, and they said that they've attended today a couple of sessions, and how absolutely impressive it was. So I just wanted to wish them well. I, I was so impressed. I looked, I looked up their program mm -hmm. um, online just to see some of the speakers and some of the uh, classes they offered mm -hmm. and it was it's so impressive and I think I, it was 102 102 years well wow. I just wanted to wish them well trustees anything else nope okay with that we'll move on to public comments Bob Saad <laughs> board uh, and administration. Uh, it's been a great summer and I've had opportunity to, to correspond with some of you over the summer and I've really thoroughly enjoyed that. I do have an appreciation for this board um, and the work that the administration is doing and um, from what I can see from the um, resolutions that are going to be going forward today there's some real progress and real responsiveness to the community which I want to acknowledge and I want to thank you for. Um, one of the things that I didn't quite understand, but uh, so I'm going to ask you if you could just comment at, at the appropriate time. I wasn't sure if, you, if the board was going to move in a direction of having um, dialogue between the community uh, and board members and administration. So I wasn't sure about that, but uh, I did see a restructuring of a board meeting agenda, um, and so I'm absolutely in favor of that. I've seen that that model recently, <laughs> um, and. Uh, De definitely in favor of that, and I think it does give more opportunity for the um, the community to be interactive and, and to be heard and to felt heard. You know, sometimes it's not just the facts; sometimes it's the feelings as well. Um, but uh, as a community member, uh, I don't think I'm alone in asking for opportunity, whether it's town hall style or or at, uh, study sessions or or whatever the whatever the format would be, where community would be able to interact uh, in a dialogue format uh, with the full board. And everybody on the board is very responsive. I send an email, I send a text, um, and, and Mark as well, very responsive in getting back. So I'm not saying that anybody's shunning responsibility. But uh, if there is an opportunity, if there's a way to incorporate a, a two-way dialogue on some of these issues that come up, uh, I would just encourage the board to go in that direction. Or I'd ask the board to go in that direction. Uh, that's it for tonight. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Thanks, Bob. Any other public comments? No. 
So with that, we will move to the reports section. And as I mentioned, there's one report this evening about the natatorium and stadium scoreboards. <laughs> so while Assistant Superintendent uh, for Business Services, Jim Larson Scheidler does some gymnastics <laughs> and gets over to the podium, uh, I just wanted to uh, just kind of uh, put this in context. There, um, we're, finalizing, we're finalizing the utilization of funds from the 2015 bond. And two items that were on, um, on our desired list of purchases were uh, scoreboards for our stadium, which, as you, as you recall, uh, we actually provided a report on that in a study session a few months back. Um, and since then, we, um, we've done some, uh, done some work. Jim has done a, a fine job working with Plant Moran Crested to come up with ways in which we can ensure that we have both funding for that initiative and the natatorium scoreboards. And we thought it would be uh, appropriate in order to expedite the purchasing uh, of those, since we've had a little bit of delay since the last time, that we do a quick report here so Jim can update you on some of the progress that we made with respect to these two items since the December 14th, 2018 board meeting where, uh, where we were talking about how, what the process was going to be. Or actually, I wasn't part of that. Interim Superintendent John Saveri was uh, working on the process for how those funds would be utilized. Um, we've made some progress since then. We wanted to up provide an update relative to these two things so that there may be a possibility that we can consider approving a purchase uh, at our next meeting. Um, so uh, with that. Uh, All right, thank you, Mark. Um, so as Mark said, we're gonna go over the natatorium and uh, stadium scoreboard information first. What we're gonna do is we're going to review the bond priority list that was discussed at the December 4th, 2018 board study session. Um, and then I'll also provide an update to that um, because as we've gone along, some projects have changed because of timing and uh, some other issues with bidding. Uh, then the process and timeline that we used for the natatorium scoreboard, working with the group for natatoriums and then also the stadium scoreboards. So this is the uh, list. This is what we had on December 4th and we discussed at the board study session. Um, I just want to give you an overview of the slide. First, if you look far to the left, that's the building that the project applies to. The second column is the description of what is going to be done. And the last column is the priority. And uh, I want to go to that last column, the priority. So what we did at the time is we had um, more projects than we have bond funds remaining. So when we looked at it, we tried to decide what projects could go into a future bond, what things were immediate needs. So if you look at the items up at the top that say awarded, those are items that we had awarded as of December 4th. Mm -hmm. And most of those were safety issues uh, for student health and you know, um, mostly to do with the pool. And then we also looked at the items of roofing that we couldn't put off um, and softball netting and some of the other items I'll go over a little bit more. Then if you go down to what says, starts at Bingham Farms, it says TBD1. Mm -hmm. That is where we said if we have enough funding after these projects are bid mm -hmm. and also once we get into the progress and find that you know, the budget is going fine, will go on to TBD1 and so forth down to TBD2. And if you look at the last uh, items, the last five, TBD3, those were the last projects that we said, if we have remaining funds, we will look at these. So with that in mind, we had to get through some of these projects, uh, say the roofing, um, you know, because if you get into a roofing project, you find that you have a uh, faulty roof, faulty beams, you're gonna have to spend a lot more money. So now we got into those projects and we've determined that we don't have to use a contingency, just a small amount of contingency. So that freed up some of the money. So now we can go down to the TBD one, two, and three. Is that, I know board members that weren't here, but the ones that were here, is that, Absolutely. Okay. That's exactly. Thank you. So giving you an update, um, what I did is I went through and 
looked at all the items that have been awarded by the board. So the top items all have been awarded. And then you get to softball netting. Um, that is a project that will be delayed because what we're doing right now is we're working on a future, um, a 10 year plan. And in that 10 year plan, one of the things at Groves is they want to redo all of the um, athletic fields. So if we put the netting in, that could be torn down in a year. So we, we talked to the AD, we talked to the principal, the coach, and they all agreed. They, they thought that we should put that off and decide what the athletic fields would look like. Um, these baseball and softball warning track at Groves, that's something that will bid in the fall. And then the generator from Corton, uh, we talked, that's, that's a generator that was going over to Midvale. And we talked to the principal and she had determined that they've never had an outage. Um, we were trying to look at some of the funding from ECC to partner with the bond. That's an item that we'll put off. And that was a used generator that we were going to install. That's something that we'll look at purchasing new or probably sell the used generator. Um, the roofing projects, those are things that are awarded. Those are going on currently. Baseball netting, that is netting between uh, the football field and baseball field at Seahome. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of complaints of baseballs flying over. That's something that we have the plans already developed and we'll bid that out in the fall. And then um, the other items, TBD1s, those were awarded. Um, where it gets to Groves, interior and exterior enhancement, those are in process now. Those are projects that we'll be bringing to you in the next uh, couple weeks for review and approval. And um, the Corton paving was approved, awarded um, carpet. Then you get down to the next delayed item, and that is perimeter fence of the elementaries. And a lot of this we found out from looking at uh, Groves, not to sort of give you a preview of something that we'd do at the football field or have a plan to do is put fencing around the football field, different fencing. We can't get fencing companies, masons, they are booked through next summer. So you, we would pay an extreme premium to do any of that work right now. So that's something that we delayed, we'll plan, we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, that will be in the safety and security area that we'll review for the next bond. And that gets us down to the scoreboards Wait, Jim, for. Jim, I'm sorry, yeah. can, I, can I go back to that um, yeah. fencing around the elementary yep. schools? I noticed that Corton got theirs about a year ago. It's close to a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then I also saw, you know, Pierce has had theirs. So how many elementary schools are left <coughs> to be fenced? You know, we have that study out and know offhand. Uh, I think Corton did their own fencing because that's not a chain link fence. Yes, it is. It is yeah. chain link? I, it's I brand thought, new, silver, a, a real bright. Okay, I'd have to look that. I thought Corton put their own fence in. I don't know if they put their own fence in, okay. but I know that it's probably less than a year old. Okay, it's still I, shiny I can check and that nice. and get back to you. But then I just wondered, um, I thought Bingham Farms didn't have one as I do a drive-by, mm -hmm. so they do you know? No, they don't. Th they don't one. have no, one, no. right? I didn't Beverly, see. Beverly has the one side fenced in for the younger kids. Just one? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the yeah, just one K through yeah. second grade area, and then like mm -hmm. the third, fourth, fifth, they're on the back of the school, so that they, I don't know how you'd fence that in. So we're talking, having this done maybe in the fall or the spring? Uh, that would have to be the following, that would be next summer, work that would be done next summer. So summer 2020. 2020. In that 2020, sense. yeah. So we but book them now for 2020. Well, what, what we would do is we're trying to plan projects. Right. So if we have, if let's say we were to go out for a bond, we would have projects ready to hit the ground mm -hmm. uh, and go in next summer. So we'd be bidding those out as soon as a bond would pass. Okay, because I just was thinking, you know, we've spent hundreds of thousand dollars on the security systems of the entrances and the cameras and the, and yet here's something so simple like just putting fencing around and it's, you know, another year delay, but it's budgeted and it's, 
It's just a matter of time. Yeah, uh, it's, it's in the plans. Um, but right now, getting fencing companies uh, and masons is very difficult to get. Okay. So. Are, are you talking about around an entire school? Because Pierce, the fencing is not around the entire school. No, no. That, it's um, almost. It's not. around the field. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the blacktop and the field, but the whole, there's a whole Front side of, of the open. school that isn't right. done. Yeah, Corton just did the sides and the back, but the front and, and everything is, is open because right. it has to be. I mean, yeah. that's how everybody gets in and out. Yeah, yeah, that's, you have to have it. That's an area that Rachel is looking at with the safety and security. Yeah. She might be able to. Yeah, thank you. I just <laughs> was making a nonverbal to see if I could insert something here. So part of it is that um, when we were working with the liaison officers, we went in accordance with their recommendations and I think after hearing this, maybe it's time to revisit that, but that was not even in their top five of their recommendations for mm -hmm. security and safety. Um, to put it bluntly, the fencing, if you examine that, um, does help in terms of students who are runners. It provides a little extra buffer. Um, it certainly assists at Midvale, where we have enclosed um, uh, play areas and play structures. Um, but in conversations and in consultation with them, they wanted to draw a clear line between what are some practices that make good common sense, like for parents to feel more comfortable if you're um, butting up to a busy road or just if you're looking at the structure of each individual building, where are some natural breaks <coughs> that make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not... Um, I'm not going to say that it doesn't add some measure of security, but it was nowhere um, on the top recommendations for us to consider. So it wouldn't even be something that we'd, we'd still put several things ahead of that if we were looking at um, a grant or something of that nature, or even as we progress in our safety recommendations, there are a bunch of other things that were recommended. So that's one piece but not to diminish the fact that the conversation can be ongoing. Um, interestingly, what happened at Corton, um, so on Renovation and Site Development Committee, Corton had brought forward that project um, because of, as, as part of their new renovation, but then there was a little bit of confusion in there because they didn't like what was put there, and so then they paid, they, ra they raised funds to redo it the way that they wanted it done. So there was a recommendation. The group of parents initially um, in the PTA along with Jill thought they wanted to go in a different direction. And I don't want to misquote anyone for certain, but if I recall correctly, there was some disagreement about the type of fencing. And because the chain fencing isn't as attractive, um, they were thinking about something else. But then when the other product came in, they were not pleased expensive. with it, so they raised their own funds to, in fact, put in what was recommended in the first place, even though it's not quite as um, appealing to the eye. Yeah, because they have two types of fencing. The one yes. is the, the iron, you know, the black mm -hmm. iron, which looks nice, but very expensive. And then around the whole big field is that silver iron chain, I mean, uh, chain link fence. So, so okay. we, I, I am happy to take this back, though, um, as always, because the world of school safety is constantly evolving, and so we will have our annual fall meeting, and I'll just raise this again to make sure that we're not missing something. But it was, it, it's good that you said it was not in the top five of security concerns by our police. So that it was not as recently as last that makes spring. Me feel fine, putting this delay, mm -hmm. getting the right price, perfectly fine. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, but that will be in, it's, it's a 10 year plan, so we'll have a lot of items, projects on that list. <laughs> right. um, so moving forward, what I wanna do is just provide you the information that we have, you know, the dates and the um, things that we've done with the groups. So April 9th, we started meeting with the aquatics group uh, to discuss and plan the natatorium scoreboards. Um, you know, there, 
There's a feeling that their scoreboards, I believe they're about 11 years old. They don't fit the needs of um, the sport. And if you really look at it, they probably don't because they are fixed. Um, you know, it's sort of like the football scoreboard right now. They are fixed areas. They don't give swimmer lap times, diving scores, like other scoreboards around us. Um, so from April 10th through June 18th, did you have a question? Right. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. no, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, during that time, we were trying to secure information, um, really to do a presentation, to come back to the natatorium group and say, this is what we've looked at. This is, you know, we've looked at other uh, districts. We see what they have. Here are the two main companies, Colorado and Dectronics. So we could go in with a knowledgeable presentation and really look at what the needs are. Unfortunately, that took an uh, extraordinary amount of time. Um, and what we found is the companies were not very responsive. They, um, I believe, that is the time that there's normal bidding going on. They're doing projects. So they're not going out and doing informational um, meetings. They're really collecting bids and um, going out and developing the scoreboards. So we had a difficult time collecting the information. Uh, once we did, we uh, scheduled a meeting for June 19th. Uh, we met and we went over all the information. We had a uh, presentation from Colorado, uh, from Dectronics. We presented that, um, so it was a Q&A. We got all the feedback. Um, I have some notes on the next slide that just give you a sort of an indication of some of the information that we received. So June 20th, we developed the bid specifications and timeline based on that meeting that we had with the aquatics group. Uh, July 8th, we had our first bid opening. We advertised per state requirements, board policy, for two weeks. We had 9 a.m. bid opening. We received no bids on time. We received one bid late, that was 45 minutes, from Dectronics. So with board policy procedure, we returned the bid unopened. Mm -hmm. With that, we, at that point, we were sort of beyond our timeline that we were really trying to get to this meeting for approval. Um, so we extended the bid for one week. We contacted both companies again made sure that they were going to submit a bid by July 17th at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, we received one bid, and that was from Dectronics. <coughs> Colorado's bid came in at 9.46. So again, we returned Colorado's bid unopened. So some of the considerations, we had about four pages of considerations, really, um, the information that we took from the group is that they're really looking for a video scoreboard. Video gives you much more um, uh, flexibility. You, you have programs that you can put up on the video because the video is a blank screen, basically, as opposed to a fixed scoreboard. So this will um, actually I have some pictures. I'll go to the next. Instant replay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do. I mean, you could essentially, um, Michigan cool. High School Athletics really, uh, when video school boards came out, they didn't want you doing video replay because that could cause controversy. Um, you know, right. probably you're going to do something for the home, show a video. I don't think that's something that we will do. We'll have to come up with procedures of what we will put on the scoreboard. Um, more it would be just showing some of the um, activity going on, sort of like this. It, it may not be like an instant replay type thing. Can we advertise on them? Like we, we sell advertisement on the scoreboards, like in the middle of the football or soccer game or lacrosse game. Can we, yeah. a local uh, insurance agent, or well, it doesn't matter what it is, any kind of business that's local? Could yeah, you, uh, actually that? on this we have down at the bottom it says sponsor. You know, what some schools will do is they will sell the sponsorship around the scoreboard. Um, and then also they'll sell, um, you know, advertising like halftime or something like that. But that, that's something that we really 
we'll look at. Uh, we haven't developed that yet. Um, right now, it's really to enhance the sport and right. um, the it, yeah. spectator viewing. Then this is one of the um, presentations. So right now, you can't do anything like this on their scoreboard. What they want to do is be able to put up the name of the swimmer, the lane, the lap time, split, um, and then on the same scoreboard, you would put diving. So you would judge diving. So it's flexible. You can use the scoreboard for all the sports. You can use it for water polo, so you can put up the players, you can put up the penalty minutes. Um, so it's much more flexible. Jim, so yeah. this is one scoreboard that can do everything we've just seen. Like, the yes. screen might look like this, and then it might have both of these on it at the same time, or it might have one of these on it. Uh, well, it could have both. It depends on the program, because what they do is they have preset programs, and then with those programs, you can program them in to say, okay, I want split times, and maybe you're doing diving also. You could go in between the two, or you could have a split screen. Um, this is the bid results of the July 17th bid opening. Uh, as you can see, we have one bidder that met all the <laughs> specifications. The uh, bid is for a total of 185,710. That's for the total of both boards that grows and see home and grows. See home and grows. Why, and why the uh, why why didn't somebody like we have many different companies out there that do this? Why? Why, why the delay? Why, they just, are they too busy to want our work? Or? They're too busy. Also, uh, the natatorium, you really don't have that many uh, companies that yeah. do that because the humidity um, and just, it's a special board. I get it, but there's got to be three companies out there, and on the three companies, only one showed up? Well, w there are two, the two main ones, Colorado and Dectronics, yeah. and then there are some other uh, minor uh, companies that don't have a lot of presence. Okay. Um, and right now, it's it's in it's in the middle of the bid season, yeah. so they're taking in and uh, performing bids in the April May mm -hmm. time frame. Once you get into June, that's sort of past their bidding time, and that's sort of I think when they freed up and they're able to provide us some information. Okay. Any questions on natatorium? If not, I'll go on to uh, stadium scoreboards. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. So, so we have this one bid <coughs> from Dectronics. Mm -hmm. So we have nothing to compare it to. Right. So. We have the quote. <laughs> well, we have the quote from both to compare it to. Uh, this is pretty much in line with Colorado. Uh, it's a little bit more. But... Um, Board policy, purchasing policy, allows us to reject any and all bids. Um, what I'm, when I looked at the bid, we, we bid twice. We received one bid. Right. There are two companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. we're not gonna I think you would. <coughs> um, I did send an email to the aquatics group and outlined several options. Okay. Uh, we're actually going to meet with Dectronics representative. Um, we're, going to, we're trying to schedule a meeting for next week. So uh, I wanted to do it before this meeting so we'd have information, know whether <laughs> we're even going to move forward with the one bidder. Uh, but we're unable to get the representative here on such short notice. So we're looking at next Tuesday or Wednesday to meet with the Dectronics representative. They'll go through all the information, um, talk to the group, and just go through the, the board, um, you know, what scoreboard does. What the biggest thing in the meeting was that we have Colorado components, uh -huh. you know, touch pads, everything, and then we're going to put a Dectronics board with Colorado uh, equipment. This bid does away with Colorado equipment, and it's all Dectronics equipment. That was the one fear that we would have to, if something were to happen during a meet, right. you didn't know if you called Colorado or you called Dectronics. Right. Yeah. So now we'd be going with all the equipment from Dectronics, you would call one company. 
Okay, so I, uh, my concern is, <laughs> is more that we're looking at something with nothing to compare it to, and I'm just curious as to what is the point of a board policy that doesn't give us the ability to see two bids side by side? Like, why wouldn't we just have suspended the board policy and said, we'll take it 46 minutes late? Because the timeline was 9 o'clock. So legally, you have to stick to what that bid is. We can't, well, we actually have Jim Crawley. I talked to Jim Crawley about this. Who's that? Jim, Jim Crawley is the attorney that will come to talk to no, us. No, I know, um, just for the benefit of Yeah, that. he's from Miller Canfield. He's yeah. who I talked to about purchasing. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, okay, sorry. sorry. Um, I mean, I'll let you answer that. We, you know, it's state law. Well, you can't and when you set up the bid, it's competitive bidding under, under the school code. Um, so it's not fair to the bidder who put it in on time. Right. Oh, oh. Right, and you can't, and just, it was, you can't twice. Just, Right, you Twice just can't it happened. randomly so, say, well. Which right. you, the only thing you could do at this point is reject all bids again and try it again and see if that's, that's really all you could do. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's not a board, it's, the board policy usually follows state law. The state law is really, it's, it's, it's not fair to the bidder to submit it on time. So. Okay. And that's, and that's why, you know, um, just one thing I'll say, just to do the follow up, you know, we wanted to make sure and, um, once we got this information, we were a little disappointed. I don't know how you miss a bid twice when you know you have a willing customer yeah, willing to spend money. Right. I don't understand that either. I don't know how hard it is to spend our money. <laughs> All right, it seems like they're making it really difficult, but we want to loop our, our aquatics group parents, our, our swim and dive and water polo parents from both of the high schools back in, reconnect, talk through you know the, the potential change and talk through the bid. Uh, and then decide what's going to be best, you know, for the, you know, for the district while acknowledging the fact that, you know, we've gone through this twice uh, and we have, you know, one company who's uh, potentially met the requirements. We need to review that a little bit further with some parents, but, um, you know, and, and there's, no, there's no resolution on the agenda to support this tonight. We just wanted to bring this to your attention, give you this update. And so once we have the meeting with our, with our parents in the aquatics group and the representative from Dactronics, um, we then can come back. You've got the backstory, and we can make a recommendation um, that's that's most that's prudent based on what you've heard tonight. How long will it take to install it if this is approved, the both boards? Well, it's up to eight weeks to have the board designed and manufactured because they haven't done any work on it at this point. So uh, the fortunate part is we're at the tail end of the manufacturing process. Most of the boards would be that have been were bid out during the normal bidding cycle have likely been manufactured and are being installed or to be installed in August. So ours will hopefully get into that little lull part of manufacturing. But once they come in, it's two days. So are you anticipating for the f uh, women's swim season that they're in or not? Um, really no, they would probably be in, you know, if it's approved August 6th. Um, they will likely be in the end of September. What the um, aquatics group really is pointing towards is a November 2nd district meet. Right. Um, you know, they really, um, you know, we had timelines. They wanted it for the um, start of water polo. Right. We're not going to make that. No. Then they want it for the start of uh, girls swim. We're not going to meet that. Then they said November 2nd is a drop dead date. So, um, you know, like I said, we had options. I, I sent them options that we're going to uh, we'll meet, we'll review. Um, this is for the district. It's a long term decision. I mean, this decision, you know, the boards hopefully last us 10, 20 years. You know, for um, I know the swim group, you know, it's something that is very important to them. I'll put that way. Um, you know, and just to sort of tag on to what, you know, Jim, just to give you an example of, you know, the closed bidding, um, you know, there, there have been instances where there's construction project. So a lot of these uh, construction people will wait outside in the parking lot. They will wait till 8.59 and they run that bid in, get it stamped at nine, 
And if, for instance, this, say we open this at 9, and, you know, um, say Colorado's out in the parking lot, we read the bid, then they can say, oh, 185, 710. Well, we're going to do right. 184, right. 9. So you really, um, you really have to stick to the process, the closed bid. Uh, the only other option, like I said, would be to start bidding process again. And that's one of the options we'll talk about with the group. So, but that will have implications as far as time. Probably would not meet the November timeline. Um, you'd probably have the boards, I would think, installed probably December, you know, over Christmas break or something. Sort of like what we did with the fans and um, the UV system. So. Okay. Well, let's start negotiating with Colorado, right? I think it's 156. Let's get let's get it. <laughs> well, right. Well, 186. We, we'll we we have the quote from both. Right. They both submitted a quote to start the process. So we had something to base this on. Now, the issue with um, Dactronics is when they submitted the quote, they submitted a larger board. Mm -hmm. So their quote was much more than 185, 710. Uh, Colorado submitted a board that was the size that we were looking at, but maybe not the uh, pitch, the um, pixels that we we're looking at. So. You know, it's sort of comparing apples to oranges. Yeah. Okay. So the stadium scoreboards, again, uh, the same process, same information. Uh, I would say with the stadium scoreboards, they were planned before. So we really had a plan that was on the shelf ready to go. So this was really just meeting. We've been meeting with the Groves Athletic Committee. Uh, we started in January 19th through April 22nd. We discussed the boards. Um, that was one of their priorities as we met. Um, so April 10th, we actually got representatives from both athletic committees together. We went over the boards um, and then we said, well, we submitted the bid, bid opening April 18th at 11 a.m. We received four bids. Now, with an outdoor scoreboard, you have more bidders because you don't have the humidity. It's a little different process. And we had one bid for electric and data. And then, so we have started the process looking at the 10-year plan with the Seahome Athletic Committee, and we started that June 10th, so we had our last meeting June 24th, and we did go over the scoreboards with them also. Here's the bid tally sheet from um, the stadium scoreboard. As I said, we had four bidders. We had score vision. We had uh, praise <coughs> signage and Vegas and Dectronics. So based on the um, review of the bid and talking with the group and um, interviewing the Dectronics and Vegas, we decided we'll probably recommend Dectronics. Uh, it's a board that's throughout the country. It's used on professional college, um, high school level. Very good board. This is really a display of what the board will look like. Um, this is Seahomes. Seahome, again, had the project ready to go. Uh, there will be a, a truss across the top that will have the Seahome, the Maple Leaf. Um, for Groves, it will be the Falcon. So uh, both boards will look the same. And that is all the information I have. Can I ask a real quick question? Um, between, um, like, uh, in the, the previous slide, between score vision and, um, <coughs> and uh, the one that, uh, the 299? Yeah. Well, what's the difference? Well, I mean, but that, that amount of money, what's, the, what's that? The 382 for score vision? Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I apologize from um, mm -hmm. De uh, Dectronic and score vision. And there's, there's a hefty difference. What, what's the difference? Between uh, the scoreboards. 
We uh, previewed both boards. We interviewed both companies. Um, ScoreVision has a really, really nice board. Um, I mean, it's like watching your TV at home. It's okay. so clear. Um, you know, you, you also have to look at the uh, density of the pixels. If So what they say is that it's like, uh, probably Dwight can probably help me a little bit on this, but uh, like 12 millimeter would be if you're 12 feet away, you're going to see clearness. So with uh, score vision, theirs was actually eight millimeters. So you would basically be right on the board with a, you know, the football stadium, soccer stadium, lacrosse yeah. stadium, yep, yep. people are sitting 100 feet away. Right. And so the density being that far away gets much clearer. Now, if, if you're going to walk like right in front of it like this, you're going to see a little bits of spaces. Okay. But being far away. I'm just curious about the $80,000. I mean, you know, what's well, the difference? Well, yeah, and ScoreVision is a new company. Okay. Um, they don't have any um, board. Uh, no, I take that back. They have, they have a board at Oakland University. It's inside. I mean, it's a really nice board. Mm -hmm. um, they have one, I believe, in somewhere around Lansing. Um, we were trying to say, you know, you Go with a Birmingham. It's advertising. You know, we were hoping to discuss a lower opportunity, but you know, they just couldn't go lower. So. Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks. So, uh, I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah. Just one quick question. Yeah. The electrical bed. Yeah. This goes no. with all of these. So no yes. matter. Okay. No matter who it would be. No matter who we chose, yes. that would be the electrical bed. Yeah. And what's not on here is we also had a addendum that was the truss. I think it's about $25,000 for both. So our, again, the goal of this was just to give you an update on, on both of these. Um, and in particular, if you, were, uh, if you were talking to members of the community, in particular in the aquatics group, you've got you know, some understanding uh, with respect to the work that we've been doing to try to solicit these bids and make these purchases and finalize this. Uh, and so we'll get some feedback, uh, and then it's our, our goal to make a recommendation at our, at our next uh, meeting, uh, you know, based on some of the information we shared. So the August 7th? Yep, yeah, potentially the August 7th. Uh, okay. If we can't conclude things um, in that time frame, then we'd move it to the, the 24th, the last one in August. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay, now we are going to move on to the resolution section of the meeting. As I had mentioned, we have 14 this evening. However, again, we've taken care of one, so we have 13 resolutions trustees this evening. The first, resolution number two, is a regular personnel action. Dean, we thought, we, we, we thought it may be quiet around here, but it doesn't look like it is, does it? <laughs> Quieter than in normal right. years. Uh, we're only going to be hiring probably about half the number of teachers that we have done the last three summers, just with some of the you know budget efficiencies we put in for staffing. But uh, we did quite a bit of hiring uh, in June and uh, in early July, which was represented here. We still have a few more positions we're working on right now. So there'll be uh, some additional hires you'll see coming up in the August board reports. Trustees, do I have a motion for resolution number two? So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions for Dean? No. Okay, all those in favor of resolution number two say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, resolution two passes six to zero. Resolution number three is the board representation assignments. For the community's uh, knowledge as well as for uh, the trustees, we feel it's very important as we go through the school year to not only work as Board of Education trustees, but to have and be liaisons to the community and groups around our um, around our school. So with that, every year we go through a process of of looking at those community relationships and uh, participating. Hey, who, who does that? Who actually does that? Who goes through that? Well, it's through discussions of the trustees as well as with those community groups and understanding exactly what the commitment is mm -hmm. and marrying it up with the trustees and what we, what we all have going on in our personal lives. If it's a day meeting, not a lot of people that work traditional nine to five jobs can do that. Others can. Right. So right. it's kind of a marrying so up, important. a discussion, interest level as well. 
So it's kind of a, a meshing of all of that. And so Thank every you. year, again, from an administrative perspective, we try to take a step back at the beginning of the school year and say, all right, <laughs> do these make sense? Do we have any changes? Um, people sometimes get in the middle of things and don't want to give it up. So. With that, from, from the community's perspective, uh, we're pleased to announce for the 2019-2020 that we do have those assignments. Um, Trustee Ajaluni, in addition to being vice president, is going to continue to serve on the BPS diversity as well as the school community partnership groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Trustee Hokemer, in addition to being treasurer, is going to continue her role in, as a liaison to the Character Education Committee. Uh, Trustee Jennings will continue again and his role as a liaison to the Special Education Parents Advisory Council, Friends of Different Learners. Uh, Trustee McKinney will again cont continue her role as the Athletic Advisory Board liaison, as well as the liaison to the B Birmingham African American Family Network. Trustee Rass is going to continue her role as a liaison to the BPS Education Foundation, the BEF. Uh, Trustee Young is going to continue all of her roles with regard to being on the Joint Senior Services Ad Hoc Committee, being on the Scholar Committee, being on the BYA Liaison, um, acting, and the new one that she will be doing this year is taking on as our legislative rep. So we're excited for that. So thank you, Trustee Young. And I will continue not only being president, however, and as well as I'll be the representative to the International Academy, as well as the PTA Council, and that's the district meetings for all the PTA presidents. So trustees, with that and knowing all of that, is there a motion for resolution number three? So moved. Okay. Any discussions or any comments from anyone? No. All those in favor of resolution three say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution three passes <laughs> six to zero. Resolution four is the appointment of our representative to the PAC committee. And Mark, <coughs> I'll turn that over to you. Yeah, so uh, there are um, uh, uh, each year. Local school districts appoint uh, members to the Oakland schools. It's the Oakland Intermediate School District. Um, it's kind of a higher level where there are liaisons from each of the Oakland schools districts where a couple of parents serve in that capacity. Uh, and um, we have a vacancy this year. And so uh, Laura Mahler and her work with the special education uh, PAC here in, in Birmingham uh, has let me know that uh, parent Stacey Macris has been appointed by the parent representatives from the PAC to uh, serve, in that, uh, serve in that capacity and we're asking for you to endorse that. Uh, the Oakland Schools Group asks that we provide the actual resolution to Oakland Schools so that they know that the uh, special education PAC representatives from each of the each of the member schools have been approved by the Board of Education. So upon your approval this evening we'll forward this to Oakland Schools and then uh, uh, Stacey will uh, start that capacity for uh, Birmingham Public Schools. Trustees, there's a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussions, questions? Thank you to Stacy. Okay, all those in favor of resolution number f four, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution four passes six to zero. Okay, now the next couple of resolutions, as I said, we've got some housekeeping to do. These are our annual designations for different administrative functions. Resolution number five is the designation of depositories. Mark, I don't know if you want to say anything or how. Uh, yeah, so annually there are uh, financial institutions uh, with which we will do business and will uh, deposit funds. Uh, for different purposes, and so that we ask the board's approval for these. Um, this is an annual routine process that's done. I don't know if Jim, you want to share any additional information with respect to um, you know some of the institutions that we use and what those purposes yeah, are. Yeah, um, all the institutions are the same. Um, you know, as Mark pointed out, some are for uh, depositories, some are for ACH. Uh, the only new one on here is UBS, where we do investing. So if they hold some of our money in a money market. That would be a depository. Trustees, is there a motion for resolution number five, the designation of depositories? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? Question for Jim. All those in favor of resolution five, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution five passes six to zero. Next, the designation of the investing institutions. 
Similar to the depositories, yes, these are just approved institutions for investing. Uh, Jim might have some additional information there, but it also uh, indicates those employees of the school district that are that are able to confirm uh, the funds that we have on hand with all of these investment institutions, list them by name and title in this resolution. Uh, Res oh. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to add there are no additional ones on this. These are all the same from last year. Trustees, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? All those in favor of resolution number six, the designation of the investing institutions, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, resolution six passes six to zero. Resolution number seven, the authorization of electronic transfers. So similar to, um, similar to the other ones, this is a, an annual requirement and really the resolution here indicates the, the employees within the school district that are authorized uh, to enter transactions for the automated clearinghouse, the uh, ACH um, transfer of funds for um, uh, you know, transferring institutions, paying bills, that type of thing. So it, 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 it indicates that these are the individuals that have that authority for Birmingham Public Schools. Trustees, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? No? Yes. All those in favor of resolution number seven, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution seven passes six to zero. Resolution number eight, the appointment of legal counsel. Yes. So uh, according to uh, board policy uh, 172, uh, the Board of Education shall uh, retain attorneys that will represent the district in various legal matters. And on an annual basis, um, there's a resolution put forth to the trustees that authorizes uh, our uh, work, particular administrators work through uh, su superintendent or designee uh, with various law firms. And so we've listed the approved law firms uh, there. Uh, there's also a section of this that, that we are authorized if there's a special project or a unique legal need that maybe falls out, out of the expertise of the law firms that we have listed here, uh, that we're able to do that. That would be something that we would, uh, you know, we would let the board know uh, that we were doing that, but we're, um, uh, we're asking you to approve uh, the legal services of uh, Luskin Arbleton, Clark Hill, Miller, Canfield, Paddock and Stone, uh, Richard Krupnik, and Collins and Blaha uh, for legal services for the upcoming year. Trustees, is there a motion? I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Other than Collins and Blaha, is there... Is this the same list as last yeah, year? Yeah, there's some that we took off, though. There were some some references in, in last year's resolution with respect to the law firms that we would have represent us through insurance claims, through set oh, right, yeah. And um, I, I, it's just, I don't know if it's something that we would approve through our contract for, um, for insurance. Uh, you know, if, if there's a matter in which they're providing representation for us, it's covered by insurance. So they're going to tell us through our, our policy with them who's going to be representing us in an insurance matter. And, and it wouldn't be something that we would do. There were a couple of others. There were some, um, there was a law firm, Seacrest and Wardle, that went back to the Adair case of 2011 and 12, something that had kind of come out of the um, uh, district business for quite some time. There was a remnant there. We haven't done legal business with them for a long time, so we pulled some of those off yeah, for those that we haven't done business with. I'm happier with a smaller list. Okay. Well, just having the flexibility to yeah. be able right. to use the yeah. firms. Trustees, is there a motion for Resolution 8, the appointment of legal counsel? So moved. Second. Second. Do we have any questions? Or any more questions? <laughs> All those in favor of Resolution 8, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 8 passes 6 to 0. Resolution number 9, the membership in Michigan Association of School Boards, which is MASB. Mark, I don't know if you, again, Yeah, we'd like to continue thing. our, yeah, our membership with um, the Michigan Association of School Boards. Uh, they provide a uh, lot of information, resources, consulting services, and there are services that they provide us uh, as a member institution that we are not charged for. So, uh, for example, um, some of the retreat work that we did last year with uh, Donna Oser and Debbie Stair, uh, quite candidly, I thought I would be getting a bill in the mail for those services. And as part of our relationship and our membership with MASB, those services are free. Um, and that includes uh, some other matters. So from time to time, um, I'll get
I'll get a question from a member of the community or a board member. Um, if I don't want to use any of the law firms that were mentioned in the previous resolution and know that I'm going to get a bill, um, I can call somebody from MASB and typically get a quick answer that, that I know is going to be rooted in, in sound, um, you know, sound background and research. So um, we just want to continue our relationship and as, a, as, a member, as a member board. Trustees, is there a motion for <clears throat> resolution number uh, nine? So Second. Second. Any questions or comments? I actually have a question, sorry. Um, the next three resolutions are all membership fees are based on upon student enrollment. So what, what headcount are we using? Given that we have a specific dollar amount here, we don't have a specific dollar amount in 10, but we have one in 11. Yeah, so. Um, Just for the communities. Yeah, so um, that's, a, that's a great question. So we are try actually, we are trying to reach out to somebody from the National School Boards Association in preparation for this meeting. We right. couldn't get a hold of anybody in time to get a specific dollar amount. Right. Um, we assume it would be that same same exact structure. Once we have that um, you know dollar amount calculated, I, I can't remember what it was last year. Do you remember, Fran, in the the agendas from last year for NSBA. I want to say it was around five or six thousand um, dollars. Okay. I guess my question is just again for the new trustees' perspective and the community's perspective. So this eight thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars, are we going to get a what I'll call gross up or gross down bill given after we do student head count in? September, October. Or do they do it based or on Or do they do last it like on rollings? No. I, right. I think they'll do it based on last year's. So, I mean, yeah, we won't, uh, the, in order for us to pay our bill with them, yeah, it'll be right. based on the, the, last, the most okay. recent last count that we have. Gotcha, okay. okay. Okay, sorry. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor of resolution nine, membership in MASB, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, resolution nine passes six to zero. Resolution number 10, membership in the National School Boards Association. Basically, I'm assuming the same thing. Yeah, it's same thing. I, thing. Yeah, I can, and I, I can't say in the, in, the, in the five months that I've been working that I've utilized the services of NS, NSBA uh, uh, quite yet, but it would allow us if we wanted the opportunity, if you wanted the opportunity to attend some of their conferences as, um, uh, and, and outreach sessions, professional learning sessions, uh, pursuant to your duties as a, as a trustee uh, here of Birmingham Public Schools, as a member of the National School Board Association, you would be able to do that. Uh, there are a number of conferences that take place uh, related to various uh, various subjects. There's an annual conference that they have. I don't know if this is something that uh, you know <laughs> represent trustees have, have done in the past, but uh, Are you we about the one in DC. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So um, so this would provide us the opportunity to to do that. Okay. Well, uh, can I just ask a question? So. This is also based upon student enrollment. I mean, is this closer to the MASB cost or closer to? Yes, we did five to six thousand. Yeah, I think it's around five, five to six. Oh, that's not that's less than. I think Fran's trying to. She's trying to find it right now. Okay. I I, I will say if 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 you want to wait until we have that specific figure, I mean, what we can do is is just not. We could just not take up this resolution, get some additional information, and bring it to the next meeting. I mean, if 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 you want to if you want to make sure you vote on something with a with a pretty good um, estimated cost beforehand. I don't see the purpose of this membership because um, one of the things you talked about is the the DC trip, which we did not do this past year, but. Our previous legislative rep, um, Jessica Thomas, did go, but this school year we're not doing out-of-state training. Right. Um, so I would feel uncomfortable sending the board to out-of-state trainings. And if that's the one bullet point um, benefit of this membership, whereas MASB, I think we were all nodding our heads mm -hmm. at how much we've taken away from that. I. If we can just jump back in at a time where we would get um, something more from the membership at a time where it's financially re responsible, I think I think that makes more sense. But if if we're getting more benefits from this that I haven't heard about, I'm very interested in hearing more. Well, but but even you saying I've only been here five months and haven't used it, five months is half of a school year. Yeah. You know, and you have used MASB. Like that is that is a data point that's very relevant. It may feel like such a short period of time, and it is, but I, I don't know. My my sense is we should maybe just table it and wait until we have a better number. But 
also, I mean, I, I would be somewhat curious. We do use MASB a lot, but I mean, there might be times where we want to consult na a na National School Board Association, especially relative to um, situations that come up that maybe we would like a comparison to an answer that MASB gave us. And so I would just want to know, is, is that part of what your membership gets you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know it gives us the, the subscription. Yeah. And I know that I like to see, I like to compare the state of Michigan and like districts around the country, around the country, with other states. I mean, I, I do like that information, but that's just, that's my personal um, knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, information. I want to be informed no, I, about that because then I have better references. But as far as, you know, I, I haven't been to the conventions or the conferences in DC. Right. I know Jessica has made, she went two years in a row and mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, Jerry Rinchler has gone almost every yeah. year. Like you said, and it's a good point, we're not, we're suspending out of state training. But the membership has to offer more than just the annual right. conference. I'm, oh, sure I'm sure there's sure other benefits do. that sure. we may yeah. not be aware of. That so we table it, we get the exact yeah. cost, and we find out what our benefits are beyond a conference that we're not going to attend. Yeah, right. that, yeah that's, I mean, that's, that's a fair... That's a fair way to proceed. We just moved to table to the next meeting and you know, we can, this is something we can wrap up easily at the August 7th. All we need to do is get a list of, you know, take a look at the form for membership, get a list of some of the information, calculate the cost for the next mm -hmm. year and just provide a report back and that's something we can vote on next time if you'd like to. Okay. So move the table until right. the next so meeting. So trustees, yes. is there a motion to table resolution number 10? So moved. Uh, all those okay. in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? Resolution 10 is tabled. tabled. <laughs> Resolution 11, Membership in Metropolitan Detroit Bureau of School Study. <coughs> yeah, so Metro Bureau, this wouldn't be one that the board would, um, where the board would receive the most benefit from. This is really for central leadership team and some of the administrators in the district. So it's, it's, a, it's a local, um, Tri, it's basically a tri-county group, uh, 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 and they facilitate a ton of updates on um, <coughs> updates on what's happening legally in the state of Michigan, uh, and most specifically, they provide really high-quality professional learning <coughs> all throughout the year uh, on different subjects and different times that are that are really timely. Um, for example, I just I actually just forwarded something to a member of our central leadership team today about administrative evaluation, administrative contracts, and, and some other things. They're hosting a session uh, locally, um, and for Metro Bureau members, you can you can typically if you if you get in and sign up, you can send as many people as you, people as you'd like to <coughs> attend some of these sessions. So you can send a team of people. Um, not all of them you go to, but it definitely is a worthwhile relationship for us to have for the uh, for the cost. Trustees, is there a motion for resolution 11? So moved. Second. Any discussion, <coughs> questions? Are uh, uh, <coughs> trustees invited to attend that as well, or is it pre pre it's pretty, really much, it's pretty much administrators? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do know that I don't think people would, a uh, board of trustee members would be, uh, you know, excluded from participation, but most, most of it's heavily focused on administrators. Okay. okay. Trustees, all those in favor of Resolution 11, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, Resolution 11 passes six to zero. Uh, just one additional thing too. Um, this, would, this would be a, a benefit to the board that I, I'm just thinking now that you're saying, uh, you, you know, there'd be a possibility to attend. A lot of times if we wanna know what's going on in the tri-counting area, we want comparisons and contracts, compensation, benefits, um, a different different structures, meeting schedules, how people are handling a number of issues just right here in the Tri-County area. Metro Bureau is the group that we go to to get those comparison results. Mm -hmm. And so that would be something where you would, you would very likely, you might you know reach out to me and say, hey, I'd like to get a comparison of administrative contracts, let's say, uh, based on the professional learning that's coming up that they're sponsoring. We would reach out to Metro Bureau and they could provide us a, you know, all of the latest reports that they have with, re with regard to what ours would look like relative to other groups. So uh, that's something where you wouldn't maybe necessarily go to an event, right. but you Sorry, would seek information we, from us. We, we would turn it. around and go to Metro Bureau and get that information from them for you. Gotcha. 
Okay, on to resolution number 12, the notice of Board of Education meetings for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, again, as I had said in the beginning, to kick off the school year, we as the trustees would like to get the dates out as early as possible for the community and for all of central administration. So this resolution documents for the 2019 going into the 2020 school year. Mark, I don't know if you wanna talk about the... Yes, I do, okay. yes. Yep. So um, I wanna explain just a couple of things in this, in this uh, resolution uh, and... Um, uh, and make sure you've got a clear picture of some of the some of the rationale. I would also say that I'm I'm open to your feedback. I mean, normally we would gather maybe at a study session and have some of this conversation. Here today we're doing it at a regular meeting, so I'm definitely open to some feedback. But um, I shared this um, with the board at a couple of retreats. I'd like to add some additional time to our calendar, in particular in study sessions, where we can we can have conversation about some of the issues that are before us, some of the decisions that we need to make. We're having those conversations in, in, in public so our community can participate. And it's my goal that we develop a cadence of work where we're, we're bringing, in particular, uh, issues that are pretty significant for our community, we're bringing things to your attention in study session so we can uh, air things publicly, get your feedback, uh, potentially get the community's feedback in preparation for a meeting where we would actually consider and make a decision on, on some of those things. So. Um, it seemed to me that the that the, the the daytime study sessions at the beginning of the month at 7:30 seemed to work well for for everybody. They definitely work well for our central leadership team. Uh, in that uh, you know it's it's not an additional evening away from home, so we thought we would capitalize that. So I retained that aspect of our meeting cadence for next year in the schedule. We have regular meetings at the end of every month that we um, are retained in this schedule. Uh, and then what I did is I tried to look at months where there would be an opportunity to have an additional study session. So there was an opportunity to spend maybe more time and do a deep dive on a particular subject. Uh, maybe there was a, a, a month uh, that we just happened to have a really, really busy agenda and we needed to spend some more time beyond the 90 minutes that we have mm -hmm. during the first week study session. Um, and so I bracketed those here and that would be a, an additional study session the evening of September 17th one in October on October 15th, one in January on January 14th, and then one in May on May 12th. I wanted to stay away from November and December because of the holiday season. Um, in February, um, you'll see there I added a study session in there. We'd like to do our first amendment to the budget uh, in 2020 in February next year instead of March. So we had a study session specifically focused on finances, so I kind of already plugged that in based on what we did this year. Uh, and, um, uh, and so that explains the additional study sessions. Uh, and then finally, I, I wanted to put on the agenda for everyone two learning opportunity retreats. Some feedback that I got from the board is, you'd like to take opportunities to have professional learning here rather than have to spend a significant amount of time, maybe one or two of you going to conferences or heading to Lansing for uh, a presentation. And so this would give us an opportunity on, I just, I just picked dates that I thought that worked in my calendar initially, knowing that we would have some discussion here, a retreat on September 14th mm -hmm. for professional learning, and then one on February 8th. I specifically chose February 8th because that night is the Birmingham Education Foundation bash, so I figured we'd be busy with district activities anyway, and so you know we might be able to kill two birds with one stone, have a retreat in the morning, spend some time uh, at home in the afternoon, uh, and then attend the bash in the evening on February, uh, February 8th. Um, and some of the potential items, I know we talked in the past about doing some DISC training, some, uh, and, and that I was gonna set up for September. That was the first request that I got from, from the board, and then we would work together over the course of the next year to figure out what that February opportunity would look like, so. I'm open to your feedback, suggestions, conflict, concerns, so that we can finalize the schedule. We know. Looks good so far. Well, I mean, I've already emailed some conflict. Do you want me to yeah. share it with the group? <laughs> I will be in Boston in September. <laughs> so I um, won't be available for the proposed um, PL retreat. September 14th, 2019. Okay. If you'd like adi additional information, my elder sister lives in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, be traveling alone. <laughs> what, what are we doing? We'll have to confirm yeah. that. <laughs>
So if you want, we could look, we might be able to look at an, you know, an October date, um, October 5th uh, or uh, October 12th, I can't. October 19th is a possibility for me. I, again, I just picked a date where I happen to be free. We could go ahead knowing that, you know, Trustee Young is not going to be there, or we could work offline. We could, you know, right now, um, you know, we could, we could post that as tentative, work offline with a doodle poll, maybe try to pick another date, another Saturday that would yeah, work best, if that's, that. if that's okay that. with you. I think that's a good idea. Especially okay. Given that Trustee yeah. McKinney's not here. I might yeah. have a conflict in October, but it's tentative at this point, so right. useless for me to. It's, yeah. It's just we can awesome. email those. We'll get this all figured out. Okay. Personal ones I'm not sure. insane. <laughs> you know, okay. Trustee Young, I'm, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to ask you to do that. Right. <laughs> it's all right. I'll share the YouTube link with my sister. Okay. I don't know. I shouted her out. Okay. Family first, right? Yeah. <laughs> Family first. Right. So for our pur so for our purposes, I think in this motion, before uh, the chair entertains a motion to adopt, <coughs> um, getting your feedback on September 14th going offline, let's label that as tentative. So if you could put brackets yeah. around that. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be a bracketed tentative meeting. <laughs> I, and I forgot to say that too. The additional study sessions I put in here, they're bracketed. We're going to label them as tentative. Mm -hmm. I don't want to schedule a meeting and have a meeting just to have a meeting. So if there is a particular time that, that we don't have to use these, you know, we can, um, <coughs> we can update the website and make sure our community knows that this is tentatively scheduled, but it's not going to be happening as tentatively scheduled. Right. Mark, I feel bad about myself. I can make all these. I mean, this is, I'm just not going anywhere. I just, I can make all gonna, these dates. We're going to spend a lot of time together. Right, right. Okay, trustees, okay. is there a motion for resolution number 12, the Notice of Board of Education meetings for 2019-20, as amended with the brackets around <coughs> September 14th? So moved. Second. No questions, questions no. or discussion. <laughs> All those in favor of Resolution 12, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 12 passes six to zero. Resolution number 13, designation of a per person for posting notices of meetings. Again, this is an annual resolution that we need to approve. Trustees, you'll see that in the resolution, Fran, our dear Fran, who does an awesome job, is listed as the person who's responsible for posting the meetings. I don't know if you want to. Means Fran makes everything happen. She does. Yeah. <laughs> she is so, our hero. Uh, here. So yeah, thank so, you, Fran, for everything. Yeah, so really it's, it's just designating Fran as the person who's going to be assuming those responsibilities. And I, I do for, for you all and for the public to know, if something were to happen and Fran were to be out, we, we have backups. We have backups that can facilitate all that, all that work. But we do need to designate according to, uh, uh, to our obligations. Uh, you know, Fran is the designee of the district to post all of our meetings. Fran, can I ask a question for my own edification. Do you have a standard by which you have to post like 72 hours prior to the meeting, 48 hours? Well, I posted on Friday. Okay. So that we can do 24 if we need to Okay, so. Mm -hmm. but I believe it's 72. Okay. No, that, I, don't, I think that's great. I just wondered if that yeah. was your standard. Okay. Yeah, and all the posting obligations are listed in our policies. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're all there. All there. Trustees, is there a motion for des uh, resolution number 13, the designation of a person of posting notices of meetings? So moved. Second. Second. Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 13 passes 6 to 0. The last resolution, number 14, public participation at a Board of Education meetings. So, yeah, so this resolution, we have a policy, uh, 167.3, uh, and the first two whereas is there are taken right from that policy, just valuing the public's opinion uh, and opportunity to hear from, from, the, from the public. And really, this just reaffirms the adoption of policy 167.3, which provides the community the opportunity to address matters of importance uh, to them directly with the Board of Education. And then there are some rules in our policies there about, uh, about how it is that we're going to facilitate that. Um, are we going to talk about this change in agenda? 
Yeah. Yes, uh, under the um, oh, yeah. information and discussion yeah. section. Yeah. So not as part of 14. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Gotcha. No. Okay. Oh, 14, yeah, 14 doesn't address any, no. any, any changes at all. It's, it's really just saying we have this, just a we have this policy okay. Okay. and we welcome the, yeah. the public's input and we have procedures that facilitate that. Okay. Trustees, is there a motion for resolution 14, the public participation at B Board of Education meetings? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? Um, I just wanted to... Um, expand a little bit on what's written in 14. Bob, one of your questions, or it wasn't really a question, it was sort of an observation that public participation was up um, in the resolutions for this meeting and what that meant and if it allowed for dialogue. Um, and as Mark pointed out, it's um, sort of just reaffirming what we have in place, which is available on NEOLA, but I have it here. Um, just to give a quick summary of 0167.3, which this um, cites to, and it's just an opportunity for people to express themselves on district matters. Um, and if you'd like to get some, one thing that I thought was, was interesting in addition to the traditional public comment format, which you participated in today, is that if you'd like to get a topic on the agenda, it gives you, um, directions as to how to go about doing that um, 10 business days prior to the meeting, um, what kind of information is necessary to get a topic on the agenda and things like that. So um, the policy as written does not necessarily afford a structure that would be dialogue, um, nor do I really think as I'm trying to dialogue with you right now, do nor do I think this atmosphere allows yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say that we don't hear your concerns and other concerns about how um, maybe a format like that would be helpful in the future. But for now, um, this, this resolution just reaffirms pretty much the format that we have in place. Um, and then also, as you pointed out in your public comment, um, we're very open to email communication as well. You know, um, a while back, interim superintendent John Silveri gave me a really clear perspective and he said the regular board meetings are really your opportunity to conduct your business, your meetings, but mm -hmm. in, pro in public. So it's not that time to have dialogue or communication. You, you record the dialogue, you take the questions, the comments, the concerns, and then not air them in public this way, but then address them afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that and just I think, really clarified mm -hmm. for so, me yeah, in my head. I how would just like to point out that we as a board do not provide Bob or anybody else in the community the opportunity to come and sit with us and dialogue. Well, I think we do. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? We meet yeah, I mean, the, I think people do coffee community. talks and not anything formal. Well, that's what he's asking for. Yeah, but I'm just saying we do have the opportunity to dialogue with people, but it's yes, not, I, you know, I like can coffee speak every one Saturday. On one, yeah. But what I'm saying is that there, there are boards that hold office hours, that have formal <laughs> means of allowing constituents and members of the public mm -hmm. to engage in dialogue with one or more board member. Well, but we do, but we do. I mean, we sit with community members. But we that's have... is, is it formal? Is it something that you post and you say, Lori Ash Looney will be at Starbucks at Maple and Lasser? No, it's not such... posted. It's when, when community members or teachers or whoever would contact me and say, yeah. But would you meet, and I, and I usually have, you know, one other trustee with me. And I do the same thing. But mm -hmm. to me, that is not a public means of, a, of having dialogue with possibly five strangers who all share one common goal, which is just to have a dialogue with board members. Yeah, we, I, we don't provide that. I think, um, you know, just thinking about that, you know, one of the things that we need to go, we need to go back to as a group 
that we talked about at several retreats, and this is, mm -hmm. this is definitely on my to-do list to, to continue to work on for the rest of the summer. And it's my hope, my hope that taking advantage of some of the study sessions that you just approved on the calendar is that we can go back and visit some of our protocols and procedures for just how we're gonna operate as a governance okay. team. And I think okay. part of that is, um, a part of that that came up in both of our sessions, first with Donna, uh, and then with Debbie, well, and, and our third session too, when we were just working as a group to kind of develop some norms and protocols, was one of the biggest things I think that we were dialoguing about that we needed to develop, um, you know, a comfortable standard for everyone, where everyone felt good about that is how are we going to engage in the community? And so I'll, yeah. you know, I've, I've listened to some of the feedback and some of the dialogue here, and it sounds like that's something that we probably need to take a look at right away, be one of the first things that we, we need to do, and so I can, Hearing, hearing the feedback from you, I can work on that. So when, again, one of my homework assignments from Debbie was to propose changes relative to the items that we brought forth in that last retreat, uh, and then make some specific recommendations to you in writing in advance prior to another study session. So I'll, I'll take that into, into account and we'll get something before you that we can action moving forward. Trustees, any other comments? No. So, although, so we already, it's already good. Yeah, I said one final thing. So this right, resolution, so this yeah, we, we still would need to consider uh, if, if, you, if you would like to. This is public participation specifically at board meetings, board meetings right? right? It's, not a, it's not a protocol for engagement of it's individual board, board members meetings. or small groups of board members with the community. Right. This is purely outlining how we're going to facilitate that, how the right. board's gonna facilitate right. that at our, at our regular Board of Education meetings. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trustees, all those in favor of resolution 14, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution 14 passes six to zero. Okay, we are done with the resolution section of the agenda. Now we're gonna move on to the information discussion. The first item is the amendment to board policy 0166, which is our the agenda. Yeah, so um, policy number 0166 outlines our regular order of business for, for our meetings and there, there were a couple of things that, that I was hoping to um, ask you to think about and considering moving forward. This is not anything we're gonna vote on tonight. Mm -hmm. This is really just the first communication of this to you, to you. Again, we haven't really had opportunity to even discuss this at all at a study session. This would be our first read. My goal is to get some feedback from you with respect to what is here based on the rationale. And then at our next regular meeting, we'll put this on the agenda for a second read. I'll get some more feedback and we'll, we'll hopefully get it to a, to a point where um, we're either staying with what is right, what is listed right now in policy 0166 for our regular form of business or something that we adopt that is, that is new. Uh, and so I, I put in here all the, the strike throughs or things that I'd like to change or would, would um, that I'd like us to consider changing moving forward. And then on the second page there on page 23 of the documents, um, I wanted to bring this in line more with what we've kind of been experiencing and try to create some efficiencies within our board meeting. So we start every meeting with a mission statement. So I wanted to list that as a regular part of our business. Mm -hmm. um, the welcome that's done by the board, board president and roll call, that's something that we do now. Mm -hmm. Typically the first thing we do is recognition and that's part of the superintendent's report. Um, and I, I, I thought it may be a good practice for us to bundle any recognition in the beginning of the meeting. Right. Uh, and then potentially take a recess if those that want to leave and don't, don't want to be part of the, the regular business meeting, they don't feel compelled to stay. That's how I've seen it done in some other districts. Um, that would be a departure. Again, what happens now is it's part, it waits on the agenda uh, until we've done some of the preliminary things, we've adopted minutes, uh, and then it comes to, uh, to me and it's part of my, uh, part of my reports. We would kind of section that out. So this would be if we had a group of students, a teacher, Anybody who maybe has family here and they're waiting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Words, uh, you know, any yeah. Yes, uh, all the, the drama groups, the scripture yeah. group that we recognize in the past year, um, uh, our, our student accomplishments as part of the BEF, um, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the PTA Reflections uh, program. So we would just put those in the, kind of in the beginning of the agenda and section them out. I like that. Yeah. Um, Can I ask a question about that? So at the bottom, it says, the sequence of items on the agenda may be changed by majority consent of the members present. So sometimes, for the recognition section, it's new hires. And they're also waiting just for us to give them the thumbs up, like you're, we're good with it. Mm -hmm. um, can we, or would you be comfortable 
with if there's a vice principal and a, and a couple <coughs> new teachers that you introduce, or usually it's vice principal and principal or something like that, if we then said, hey, everybody, does a majority think we can move up the resolution? Uh, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, because I just because that's a situation where I've seen people wait till nine forty five just and, to and have us. And they little kids vote, with them, right. and they right. think that it's going to be a whole nother right. congratulations, right. and we move right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's their Sorry final it. test if they yeah. can make it through the board meeting. Right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and and I think too, you know, with that feedback, I can think more deliberately about that. And the goal would be to have a, after this discussion. Now, okay, now we're kind of liberated to do that. Right. We could anticipate that and you know propose that change in the right. beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not just like individual family members dropping like flies yeah. <laughs> every right. hour on the hour yeah. and exiting. Yeah. 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 So after the five minute recess, um, we'd have any additions or deletions if there are things that need to be added or, or we're not going to address in the agenda. Then we'd have the superintendent's report with board, re, uh, board comments and requests and public communication. Um, in order to organize our public communication, again, I'm looking for feedback. I'm not necessarily married to this. Um, we would separate public communication out in two ways. Public communication on agenda items before the meeting, so you're hearing from the community prior to uh, any report or resolution as, as we have uh, done right now. Uh, and then to keep it efficient, it would, we'd move public communication and non-agenda um, items down uh, later on later on the agenda. Uh, again, if it stayed with all public comment at the beginning too, I would I would be fine. I just wanted to bring this up if if, if this is something you may may want to do. Um, Jay, for um, but can can I address that? Sure, sure. Because um, so I, I actually like the idea of having two sections for public comment. Uh, mostly because it, it's possible that somebody could be rushing from work to get to our meeting and not make it in time to mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. on the earlier comment section. It's also possible that somebody might want to make a comment based on something that was presented or said at the board meeting and they could then do that in that second thing except you've said it must be a non-agenda item. And I, I guess to me, I, I, if we're looking to expand community engagement and um, opportunities for people to engage with the board, I don't know why we would limit this to non-agenda items. And specifically because I often think stuff comes up in the meeting that would <coughs> cause a community member to think, hey, I would like to address that. But, and, or, we would have already, so by, let's just say that the community member chooses to choose the second, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna say oh, section. whether it's on the agenda, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and if it's already been on the agenda, we would have already voted on that specific resolution. If we, if we adopt this, under K, mm -hmm. L, and M, we're going to hear a report, yep. and then we're going to say, trustees, oh, let's vote on the resolution. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll do that. So if, that, if the community member is, has, a, has a concern, concern, an issue, by the time they're able to speak again, I mean, they're, we've already voted. True. Well, but does that mean their opinion? No, I'm just saying, though, but they, it, I didn't know if you were thinking if they were going to be able to, to influence, influence well, us or board. sway us. That means. But sometimes, for example, tonight, we saw a presentation about the natatoriums and the scoreboards. Mm -hmm. There was no vote on that. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's happening later. Um, anybody who had been sitting through it who might have a comment of value to us as well as to the public could then make that comment. Well, True. under 0167.3, which was cited in mm -hmm. number 14A, it says public participation shall be permitted as indicated on the order of business, which would be this. Mm -hmm. But in addition, the presiding officer may permit public participation before the board takes official action on any issue of substance or at a time as determined by the presiding officer. So hypothetically, you could have a situation where you ask for public comment, and, but throughout the meeting, public comment cards are collected. And, and as we hear 
something, um, you know, as we, at, right after we second um, a motion, we can say one last call for public comment. Mm -hmm. Do we have to do that every time on every thing? No, but I, but I think if you read the audience we'll or see someone who came in late or recognize a face in the audience, or like I said, if we implement a policy where it's just a, people know they can always fill out a comment card at any time. And, um, you know, but that's just something we can talk about because um, it is an option for us under that policy. Um, I, I like that. I mean, I, but I like the two places as well. I, mm -hmm. I think more public comment is conducive to just yeah. inviting the public hearing their voice and, yeah. and increasing participation. Yeah. So Mark, if it's not broke, why fix it? Um, so the first one, and what I'm seeing here is that the difference is, is that we're gonna have another public comment later in the, later, later that's the, the real the, the, that's the, di thing. the difference is, if, you, if they're, let's say, let's say we have, um, you know, an agenda like tonight, we've got 14 okay. items, right? I mean, some of them are, you know, rather perfunctory exercises. Others are, you know, are going to require some debate and discussion. Um, and that's you, you, you focus your public comment on those things that you're making a decision tonight. You're putting those people at the front of the line and prioritizing that focused input okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on specific agenda items that are coming up in the meeting to make sure that that's front and center in the board's mind when they're in discussion and making decisions, right? right? It, it's something that's on the agenda. There's a resolution that you're considering or a report that's being tendered. So, so you're concentrating that in the beginning, and then what you do at the, at the end of the meeting, once you've been able to conduct that business relative to the reports, the information that you discuss and the community feedback, then you allow another opportunity, okay, is there anything else that you would like to address the board? This is not on our agenda, right. but we'll you know, come one, come all for anything else that you would like to share with us of concern that you would like to let the Board of Education as a whole know. Um, as, as we do it right now, I, I, I agree. I'm not seeing anything that's, that's, uh, that's broken. I was just trying to think of a way that, uh, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to bundle the reports and the resolutions together later in the agenda, is to try to find a way that we can make some things more efficient, focus our energies on those things that we need to make decisions on, but still be open to the public for those things that are of interest to them and may not be on our, on our agenda at all. And then the final thing I want to say with respect to how, um, how we set up K, L, M, and N on here, <coughs> teaching and learning, personnel, business services, and then any others that may not fit into those categories. Oftentimes we'll have a report uh, that's tendered by a member of the central leadership team uh, or me. There's a lot of discussion and there are questions and then we kind of move on and then go on to the next report. Then we go on to the next report uh, and then we go on to the resolution section again, and there's discussion, uh, and there's more discussion about yeah. the same topic that we just that we just talked about. Uh, and so my thought is, if there's a resolution that's fresh, everybody's had the chance to ask questions. You feel like you've got the information you need. Now we can open up debate within the Board of Education about the merits of the resolution, approving it or not, and take that vote right then and there after the after the report. So there's not a there's not a doubling of, of debate at some right. times on mm -hmm. issues. I don't want to say a true doubling, but there's extended time there. So it's just a different way to do it. Uh, I agree with you, Brian, that this is not, this is not broken at all. I was just thinking, hey, we have an opportunity, got a new board, new superintendent. You know, there may be a way to organize our meetings to make them a little bit more efficient. Okay. Um, and then the final thing I want to mention is I have, I, I put in here a general consent agenda. So there are things that you can put in a consent agenda right now that our board policy allows us to, to put in there. If there are routine reports, um, we could, if we wanted to, move our personnel report in the consent agenda. You can put con um, approval of minutes for meetings in the consent, consent agenda if you like. And our policies allow this. There are very specific um, uh, uh, items that are listed in our policies that would allow us to do that mm -hmm. uh, just to make things more efficient. And I'll give you an example. On an annual basis, we're required to do some overview of the Oakland schools budget mm -hmm. uh, for the year. That would be something if we wanted to, we could during a meeting list all of the things are, that are in the general consent agenda that we posted publicly. Um, but that's something that we could put that report and whatever obligations we have relative to Oakland schools in the consent, consent agenda for approval. So we wouldn't have to spend a necessary time on it meeting if we chose. So like the first seven resolutions yes. we just did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could. Or the 21 that we had in June. 
right. a lot of them. For a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, and some you may you know some you may not want to you know right. you you want to have some discussion or you want to bring something to the public's attention, uh, but it gi it gives you that ability yeah. to do that. Right now, our policies allow us to use consent agenda, but because policy zero one six six doesn't list it as a regular item of business, the only way that we could put it on there is to take a majority vote of the board during the meeting that the consent agenda is used, and we can't prepare it. So there's there's no way to do it unless it's on a potential agenda. Mm -hmm. And then we would end with calendar announcements and the adjournment, kind of like we do right now. Mm -hmm. I really love a lot of these changes and Me the too. organization that's happening with KL, the Me thematic too. organization so. happening with KLM and N. Um, the, the potential five minute recess if warranted or even a two minute one just to allow people the comfort to leave. Um, but I agree with, with Brian's point um, about it not bringing broke, don't fix it type thing. I just don't know that O makes sense for me because I think about, especially with our really long meetings, the mental state that I'm in <laughs> around the time, oh, it, which is sort of funny, but also very real, like sometimes, sure it is. Sure you it know, is. and I just wouldn't, that's such a valuable part of the meeting to me. And, and I, I, like not I, letter I on this, being public communication, plus the policy that I mentioned where we can call upon additional public comment at any point if the presiding officer deems it appropriate. Um, I just don't see how concluding a meeting with more public comment would be really beneficial for us or for the speaker. Um, but, but that's my take on it right now. Um, but, but I also see and like in terms of theme, how it's all very agenda focused. And then we conclude with like, let's get to, um, not agenda stuff. And then the calendar, like I like thematically how that concludes, but I just don't see that as the time where I would be most attentive. Why don't we wait to list public. O? Why don't we wait list just letter O? Well, we're not voting on this. Yeah, right? we don't have. So, I know it's yeah. not a vote, yeah. but I'm just saying, just to, to give Mark. We can, yeah, we can deliberate with direction. So, yeah. I mean, if so, just to if 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 we were to, options. yeah, if we were to remove O, what it would look like is yeah. I would change to public communication. <laughs> right. And and just so you're aware, if it's public communication, mm -hmm. and then on agenda items has a strike through, it's exactly what we have right now. Right. Like it's yeah. the same. That's right. Right. It's the same thing. We would just eliminate <laughs> oh, cross out those three words, and then <coughs> right. we'd be fine. But then, we'd be fine. Uh, my only issue with it, like the board policy, as Adrian read it, is is serving the same purpose. However, I don't think anybody utilizes it currently, nor. Like for example, if somebody is sitting out there and thinking, gosh, I'd really like to make public comment, they wouldn't know to send a card forward and then Kim would at some point in the agenda say, We'd, we have some more public comment. So somehow we would need to make that yeah. clear to the public. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I, I think eliminating O, I think the general theme is we want we want more interaction. We're hearing from the community that they want more interaction with us. Um, o doesn't necessarily afford us that. I think if we talk, if we get rid of O and then talk about how potentially maybe in the second study sessions, um, more of the town hall, more of the collaboration, and or utilizing that piece of right. the board. Um, but I would really want some specific guidelines around how are we utilizing that yeah, specific no, I piece totally because agree. I think that's um, and I think it's, it's important. All subject it's to optional. You know, it's I'm not. Optional. I'm not saying, oh God, this right. says we have to do it, and we haven't been doing it. I think that's a but whole what, another what, conversation right. that's got to happen. I brought yeah. some really mm -hmm. And I think that's absolutely right. We need norms and and public mm -hmm. information to go out that says, well, hey, this is how we're going to do it. It would be something we would then have to communicate right on the co the comment the card, yeah, yeah. right? And in the beginning, right? In the beginning. We don't want it to be so big that because right. we have to get our policy yeah. all on there. You know, we could, too, um, President Whitman just mentioned this. I mean, maybe this is also just part and parcel of kind of re, redefining and re, real, redefining and re-articulating how 
community input is going to be yeah. sought. And so maybe this is, again, step one is if the agenda seems okay, we don't want to, we don't want to separate this into agenda and non-agenda items. That seems awkward, but we still want to figure out what that may look like moving forward. You know, we could do this part one. You know, all we need is two readings on policy and it can change at any time. We could work on some of our protocols. Uh, maybe there's some new things that we're going to be doing to engage the community that may, may make this something that you don't really want to do moving forward. And secondly, um, one additional thing that I'd, I'd like to make sure that the Board of Education knows from my standpoint, the idea of having more study session opportunities and more time, you're really trying to invest in developing a more collaborative governance team model where there's more, there's more, we're providing you with options and information yeah. and you're providing us with a little bit more direction and you're also doing that in public. And so for some of the bigger items, you know, part of, part of it is to ad adopt a new cadence of meetings where we have many, many more opportunities to get something on a study session and, and really have candid conversation like we're having right now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not on television, but certainly in full view of the public's eye, those study session agendas are published so people know what it is that we're talking about. Um, and then I think some of the concerns I, I think that, that we've had where there's not enough time or there's a surprise that you haven't been given enough information where you feel really, really good about a decision, those study sessions I think are gonna make, are, are, are gonna make a big difference. I really do. Um, uh, it's not a panacea for, for, for how, making things perfect, but I think it's gonna make a, make a big difference as well, so. Okay. Any other questions, comments? So we're. S I, yeah, no, I've got I've got really good direction. Yeah, okay. and so, uh, yeah, I've got great direction. So I'll 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 amend this, and before we do planning for, for the next meeting, we'll we'll have a second read. I'll continue to work on some of the protocols, and we'll proceed. And so, thanks for your feedback, everyone. I appreciate it. So again, on the August seventh, which we'll talk about in a minute, the regular meeting, you will see this again as an agenda item for the second mm -hmm. read. Okay, anything else, Mark, under information and discussion? Uh, no, no, nothing at this time. Okay. So next up, calendar. Yeah, we included it in the packet the calendar for the next school year. Um, I'm gonna make all, all the students out there that are watching this meeting, I'm gonna make them all happy. I'm not gonna talk about the return to school uh, quite yet. Hundreds and hundreds that are watching. I'm not going to do that. So we're just gonna continue our summer and at one of our future meetings, one on August 7th, I will make sure that there is a mention of when school is going to start. Will you note the smiles back there in the second <laughs> row? Will you note the smiles? <laughs> we need to still enjoy our summer. Uh, okay, thank you. So, and again, for the community's perspective, as I said, July we we held only one abbreviated one meeting today. It was an abbreviated schedule. For your planning purposes, in August we have on August seventh a regular meeting at seven p.m. August 13th, we have a study session at 6 p.m. And then on August 20th, we will hold our regular meeting at 7 p.m. So the month of August, we're gonna be busy and seeing a lot of each other. <sighs> Trustees, anything else before we adjourn? Nope, okay, we're gonna adjourn the meeting. Uh, trustees, we're gonna take a five minute recess and we're gonna move into White Pine where we're gonna go into a closed session. Mm -hmm.